Fight for the one and only SJ. Welcome to the Step and Fight for video show. We are in my hometown, Atlantic City, on the world famous boardwalk. And just for the next couple of minutes, just sit back, relax, and enjoy yourself because I'm a professional at what I do when I got to. I'm here to give you. Your favorite music videos from your favorite artists. We got some entertainment news, and we got a special guest today on the show. Special guest is, in my opinion, next in line to be the ambassador of Atlantic City to the gospel music industry. Everybody he's worked with has blown up, which means to me that he's about to explode himself. His name is Minister John Howard Jr. We're going to be interviewing him today. I'm going to go try and find him right now, and while I'm going to find him, watch the video. I'll be back. She wanted me to come over, so I came to her crib around there. We started talking, then she fixed me a high place. Then she said, come with me to the living room to watch some TV, maybe comic view. And then she told me to come up to her room. I knew in my mind what she wanted to do. About two weeks ago, the rent was due, but the problem was we were broke. She said I needed to contribute to the household. I needed to think about it, so I walked to the store. I saw my old partner standing outside the door. I told him my problem, told him I needed some dough. He said he had a job and asked me, did I want to roll? I thought to myself, I can't. The ministry of Minister John W. Howard Jr. and the End Time Levites was birthed on the campus of Rowan University, located in Glassboro, New Jersey. It was during John's final year as director of the campus gospel choir that the vision for his next phase of ministry was unveiled. The End Time Levites was founded on September 23rd, 2000. The choir consists of various young people coming from all different walks and denominations in the body of Christ. Along with the dynamic voices anointed to sing, God has blessed the choir with anointed musicians, which contribute greatly to the success of the ministry with Minister Jared Howard as the musical director. The End Time Levites have traveled extensively and appeared with gospel greats such as Richard Smallwood, Daryl Coley, Shirley Caesar, Ty Tribbett and G.A., and others. Minister Howard has been blessed to preach at various services, youth conferences, and revivals, spreading the love of Jesus and feeding the word of God to all. Minister Howard joyfully embraces his first call to his family as a husband and father. The End Time Levites travel throughout the United States, spreading the message of hope, deliverance, peace, and salvation to God's people. Now let's hear from the man himself, Minister John W. Howard Jr. So, Mr. John Howard Jr. is in the building, and I'll let him get through the door before I get through the door. And <laughs> <laughs> so, first off, how did you get started in the music game? Well, I don't um, want to call it a game. But well, I understand. <laughs> but, well, I got started math with my parents. I was raised in gospel music. I was actually raised to know the Lord, uh, and my parents introduced me to having a relationship with God. And through that, uh, my parents were also uh, musically inclined, they still are. And uh, my father started the John Howard Caravans right out of high school. Mm -hmm. So my first introduction to gospel music was really through the John Howard Caravan. Uh, but my outlet to be able to begin to play and, and, and uh, to function in music ministry started here uh, at New Hope at my church, where I've been a member here all my life started out playing drums. After I started playing drums, I started singing. 
after I started singing, you know, went to college, started directing, and doing a lot of choir work, and, and now, you know, we have our own ministry, the end time Levites, and we travel all over, ministering and playing, and doing, you know, a whole lot of things like that, so that's pretty much, you know, the abbreviated version of how things got started. So, where did you get what I call the bug? When did you, <laughs> when did you? I when think, you, well, I think I got the bug <laughs> as a musician. I started playing the drums and I started loving gospel music and I started to see the effect that music had on people. Mm. I would play and I would see how people would react and I, I really didn't connect it at first that about as far as the ministry, but I just knew that people enjoyed it. Yeah. And I knew there was an art to it, and I knew that the artistry side of it had an impact on people. Uh, and then as I became became uh, closer and got closer to the Lord, I started seeing that, uh, you know, it's more to it than just the artistry. Mm. That it's actually the Holy Spirit through the words and the things that we're saying, that we're singing the Word of God. And I began to see that people were really impacted, and it actually started to change my life and do a lot for me. I mean, honestly, before I was even into the Bible, or before I even really had a heart for the Word of God, it was really the songs and, and the music ministry that really drew me into really having a personal relationship with God. Even though I preach now and I, I love God's Word and I study God's Word, I, I have to say for me that it was the music that drew me. Mm. So that's how it started off for me. That's, I guess, if, if there's a bug, to be had. That's where my book came from. Yeah. <coughs> so you have your own choir mm -hmm. right now, the Levites, the end time Levites. They've been gone for 10 years. 10 years. Wow. <laughs> so, all right. So say I, I'm a singer, I'm an aspiring singer, and I, I want to join the Levites. How do I get on the Levites? Well, you just contact me and, and we, we talk for a minute. Yeah. And you and, you know, after we talk, I, I get to fill you out and try to discern where you are and then hear what God is saying. And then, you know, we have you come on and then, you know, introduce you to everybody. You come on a Tuesday night mm. to one of our rehearsals. And then you just, you know, start learning the material and learn our heart for ministry and allow God to kind of link you into where we are after, you know, you learn the vision and our mission and our concept. And then, you know, link in and join in just like one of the family. So the requirement is to learn the vision? Yes, to, kind of to, to embrace the vision and know what a Levite actually is mm. from a biblical standpoint, even from a spiritual standpoint. The singing thing is not really an issue. Uh, I, I'll teach a rock while I how to sing. Wow. So that, that I'm, not, I'm not too concerned about the singing aspect, uh, more so as I'm concerned about the ministry concept. Okay, so how would you describe the Levites sound? <sighs> well, the, <laughs> <laughs> the sound of the Levites, I, I would say, is really based on what I came up in. I came up uh, with the John Howard Caravan, mm. and um, I, I learned a lot of watching, you know, how to develop a lot of vocals from Bishop Lyles. Uh, so I would say a lot of a lot of the sound that I, I try to produce is based on what's in me, and that's what's in me because every Monday night, growing up, that's where we were, mm. and that's where I saw songs taught. That's where I saw uh, sound, the sound that they have developed and nurtured. Um, but I also have outside influences, of course. Um, Thomas Whitfield. If it, if Caravan number one is is number one to me, wow. but if there's a number two. Thomas, Thomas Whitfield Company. Big, uh, big, big, big stuff right big there. Big stuff, major. Oh, yeah. So, besides your Thomas Whitfield, uh, I've also been a fan of uh, Atlanta Draper, mm. um, uh, the Angelic Voices from uh, Memphis, Tennessee. Um, then you have some of your more modern people, uh, like Dillard, uh, James Hall. Uh, but I'm also, I'm very keen on the sound of the Hawkins. Yes. Um, that's the piece for all That's all. right. So the Hawkins, uh, and different people like that, that song, hardcore church music that has substance. Hardcore church music. 
I mean the kind of stuff. <laughs> yeah. I, and I'm not down in the stuff that we have now. Yeah. But, you know, I grew up in an era when people sang. I saw yokes destroyed. I saw demons manifest and cast out. Not so much off of somebody preaching, but off of a song that was sung. So, do you think that that's we don't have enough of that now in the we gospel? Definitely music don't industry? have enough of that now. I, I think <laughs> <laughs> you always do this, man. Oh man! <laughs> I, I, think, I, think, I think, in my opinion, I think we cater too much to the world's aspect of what it, music should be, and we try to. We try to link link it all up mm. instead of hearing God for our own sound right. and hearing God for what it is we need to do. Prime example of hearing God for your own sound is you have somebody like Israel Hawk. Okay. Uh, in my opinion, you still hear them outside influences. You, if you, I, I've studied his music for quite some time, and you hear a little Stevie Wonder, you hear a little Prince right. in there, but at the same time, it's still all his own. And you can still always tell that it's kingdom music, that it's gospel music. Mm. And I just can't say that for everything that I'm hearing. Mm. I'm hearing, you just said kingdom music. That brings up a good point. And a lot of people nowadays, they're saying that there's a difference between kingdom music and gospel music. Is there a difference? Uh, well, technically... Mm. There is. Spiritually, there shouldn't be. Mm -hmm. When I say technically, I mean gospel music, just by the term being gospel music, culturally is a difference. Okay. Because gospel music is something that was uh, invented, <coughs> excuse me, getting over a cold, yeah. but um, invented or steeped in the African American culture. Mm -hmm. But as you see now, us as African Americans, even in church, we're embracing a lot more of the CCM mm -hmm. influences. Um, you're seeing a lot more of us, you know, embracing like the rock style and a lot of different things. It's, it's more than just you know choir robes, tambourines, and, and you know picking them up, put them, putting them down. It's, it's nothing wrong with it. It's nothing wrong with that. Cause yeah. I, I mean, that's that's who I am. <laughs> but it, it's when you deal with kingdom music, it's saying I'm making music that everyone can identify with mm. music that establishes God's kingdom here on earth and the thing is this earth is more than just black folks mm. good point there's more saved people than just black folks good point you know what all right we're going we're going to come right back and we're going to have more with John Howard right now we want to take a break real quick not to pay bills or nothing but just take a break we'll be back we'll be right back so right now to God be his glory. I don't have to prostitute my gift. I don't have to preach and raise twenty dollar lines in order to pay my electric bill. To God be the glory. Some tough stuff. I don't have to do that because I'm a school teacher. Mm. Coming up, the interview gets serious. You're watching the Stephen Pfeiffer video show and you love it. I'll be back. <laughs> 